Welcome to AmeenAcademy.com. In history of Muslim world, let us discuss about history of Moses. The Pharaoh who ruled Egypt was a tyrant who oppressed the descendant of Jacob, known as the children of Israel, that is Bani Israel. He used every means of dem demean and disgrace them. They were kept in bondage and forced to work for him for small wages or nothing. Under this system, the people obeyed and worshipped the Pharaoh, and the ruling class carried out his orders, thereby authorizing his tyranny and crazy whims. The Pharaoh wanted to, the people of, to obey him only and to believe in the gods of his invention. Perhaps during the time, there were many classes of people who did not believe in or practice polytheism. However, they kept this to themselves and outwardly and as they were expected to do, without revolting or revealing themselves to anyone. Thus, successive dynasties came to Egypt and assumed that they were gods or their representatives or spokesmen. The killing of the children of Israel was carried out until the experts of economics said to Pharaoh, the age of the children of Israel die and the young are slaughtered. This will lead to an annihilation. As a result, Pharaoh will lose the manpower of those who work for him, those whom he enslaves and the woman whom he exploits. It is better to regulate these procedures by initiating the following policy. Man should be slaughtered in one year and spared to live the next year. Pharaoh found that solution to be safer economically. Now, the birth of Moses and Aaron. Moses' mother was pregnant with Aaron in a year that boys were to be spared. Thus, she gave birth to the child publicly and safely. During a year in which boys were to be slain, she gave birth to Moses. Thus, his birth caused her much terror. She was afraid he would be slain, so she nursed him secretly. In Islam, Moses or Musa, was born during a time when the Israelites were enslaved by the ruling king of Egypt. This was around 100 years after the death of Prophet Joseph. Moses, of, Moses is often referred to by the title Khalimullah, meaning he who spoke with God. The Quran mentions his, him more frequently than any other prophets. It is traditionally believed that Moses lived to the age 120 years. According to Islamic tradition, Moses was born, in, born into an Israelite family in Egypt. His father was named Imran and his ancestor was Levi. At the time of Moses', Mo, Moses birth, the Pharaoh had a dream of fire coming from Jerusalem that burned everything in his kingdom except for the land of the Israelites. The rulers of Egypt had decreed that any Israelite son born would be put to death, but only daughters would be spared. However, God command, commanded Moses' mother not to cast him into the river, but to raise him. Moses is an important figure in the Muslim Muslim, that is Quran, where he is mentioned in one on five times. He is also a significant figure in the Old Testament and Christian Bible and the Jewish Torah. Islam teaches Islam teaches that all prophets came to their people with the same proclamations, that is, O oh my people, worship God. You have no other God but him. Moses called the children of Israel to worship God alone and the 
and he laid down the laws prescribed in the Torah. Verily, he did send down the Torah to Moses, therein was guidance and light, by which the prophets who submitted themselves to God's will judged the Jews, and the rabbis and the priests too judged the Jews by the Torah for to them, was entrusted the protection of God's book, and they were witnesses thereto. Quran 5, 44. According to the Quran, Musa was born to an Israelite family, and his childhood he is put in a basket which flowed towards Nile. The eventually, and eventually, Musa is discovered by Pharaoh's crown wife, not named in the Quran, but called Asya in Hadith, who takes Musa as her adopted son. After reaching adulthood, Musa then resides in Midian. Before departing for Egypt, again to threaten the Pharaoh, during his prophethood, Musa is said to have performed many miracles and is also reported to have personally talked to God, who bestows the title Speakers of God, Khalimullah, upon Musa. The Prophet's most popular miracle is, is him dividing the Red Sea which is miraculous stuff provided by God. Apart from the Quran, Musa is also described and praised in the Hadith literature as well. After Pharaoh's death, Musa and his followers travel towards Jerusalem where the prophet eventually dies. The Mount Sinai, also known as Mount Horeb, is a majestic mountain located in Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. It is situated in the southern part of the peninsula, raising to an inscribed height of 2,285 meters above the sea level. This is an important place for Musa history. What are Ten Commandments in order and simple terms? First one, you shall have no other goods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witnesses against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Here, yeah. further, we we'll talk about how the Moses, the child Moses, thrown into a name. No sooner had the divine revelation finished than she obeyed the sacred and merciful call. She was commanded to make a basket for Moses, that is, uh, his mother. She nursed him and put him into the basket, then went to the shore of the Nile and threw it into the water. Her mother's heart, the most merciful one in the world, grieved as she threw her son into the name. However, she was aware that Allah was much more merciful to, to Moses than to her, that he loved him more than her. Allah was his Lord and the Lord of the name. Hardly had the basket touched the water of the nail, then Allah issued, issued his command to the waves to be calm and gentle while carrying the child would one day be a prophet. She instructed her daughter to follow the course of the basket and to report back to her as she as the daughter followed the floating basket along his this river bank. She found himself night in the palace ground and saw what was unfolding before her eyes. Moses finds a home in the palace. <clears throat> the basket came to rest at the river bank, 
bank which skittered the king's palace. The palace servant found the basket with the baby and took it to the pharaohs and his queen. When the queen beheld an lovely infant, Allah instilled in her strong love for this baby. Pharaoh's wife was very different from, from Pharaoh. He was a he was a disbeliever, Pharaoh's disbeliever. She was a believer. He, he was cruel, but she was merciful. He was tyrant, but she was delicate and good hearted. She was sad because she was infertile and had hoped to have a son. Only had she held the baby, then she kissed him. Then he kissed her, kissed him. Pharaoh was much amazed when he saw his wife hung, hugging this baby to her breast. He was much astonishing because his wife was weep, weeping with joy, something he had never seen her do before. She requested her husband, let me keep the baby and let him be a son to us. Moses, finally Moses finds a home. Almighty Allah said, then the household of Pharaoh picked him up that he might become for them an enemy and their cause of grief very deep. Pharaoh, that is Haman, and their hosts were sinners. And the wife of Pharaoh said, a comfort of the eye for me and for you, kill him not. Perhaps he may be of benefit to us. Oh, or we may adopt him as a son, and they pursued not. That is the final result, they don't know. The Moses and his, his mother reunited. The queen summoned a few <coughs> wet nurses to suckle the baby Moses, but, the, but he would not take any of their breasts. The queen was distressed and sent for more wet nurses. Moses' sister was also worried as her baby brother was without milk for a long time. Seeing the queen's anxiety, she blurted her that she knew just the mother who would suckle the child affectionately. They asked her why she was following the floating basket. She said she did so out of curiosity. Her excuse sounded reasonable, so they believed her. They ordered her to rush and fetch the women she was talking about. Her mother also was waiting with a heavy heart, worried about the fate of her baby. Just then, her daughter rushed in with the good news. Her heart lifted and she lost to no time in reaching the palace. As the child was put to her breast, he immediately started suckling. Pharaoh was astonished and asked, Who are you? This child was refused to take any other breast but yours. Had she told the truth, Pharaoh would have known that the child was an Israelite and would have killed Moses instantly. However, Allah gave her inner strength and she replied, I am a woman of sweet milk and sweet smell, and no child refuses me. This answer satisfied Pharaoh. From the day on, from the day onward, she was appointed as a Moses witch nurse. She continued to breastfeed him for a long time. When he was bigger and was weaned, she was allowed the privilege of visiting him. Moses was raised in their place as a prince. The quality of qualities of Moses in Quran. And when he attained his full strength and was perfect in manhood, we bestowed on him Man, the prophethood, right judgment of their affairs, and religious 
and religious knowledge of the religion of his forefathers, that is Islamic monotheism, and thus do we reward the Muhsineen. Moses kills an Egyptian. Allah had granted Moses good health, strength, knowledge, and wisdom. The weak and oppressed turn to him for protection and justice. One day in the main city, he saw two men fighting. One was an Israelite who was being beaten by the other, an Egyptian. On seeing Moses, the Israelites begged him for help. Moses became involved in the dispute and in a state of anger struck a heavy blow on the Egyptian who died on the spot. Upon realizing that he had killed a man being, Moses' heart was filled with deep sorrow and immediately he begged Allah for forgiveness. He had not refunded, intended to kill the man he pleaded with Almighty Allah to forgive him and he felt a sense of peace filling his whole being. Thereafter, Moses began to show a more patience and sympathy towards people. The next day, he saw the same Israelites involved in another fight. Moses went to him and said, You seem to be a quarrelsome fellow. Do you have a new quarrel with one person or another each day? Fearing that Moses might strike him, the Israelite warned Moses, Would you kill me as, a, as you killed that wretch yesterday? The Egyptian with whom the Israelites was fighting overhead, overheard this remark and reported Musa to the authorities. Soon thereafter, as Musa, Moses was Passing through the city, a man approached it and alerted him, O oh Moses, the chiefs have taken counsel against you. You are to be tried and killed. I would advise you to escape. Moses leaves Egypt. Moses left Egypt in a hurry without going to Pharaoh's palace or changing his clothes, nor was he prepared for traveling. He did not have any beast of burden upon which to ride, and he was not in a caravan. Instead, he left as soon as the believer came and warned him of Pharaoh's plans. He traveled in the direction of the countries of Midian, which was the nearest inhabited and land between Syria and Egypt. His only companion in his hot desert was Allah and his only provision was piety. There was not a single route to pick a lozen him hunger. The hot and sand gone the soles of his, his feet. However, fearing pursuit by Pharaoh's men, the forced himself to continue on. He traveled for eight nights, hiding during the day. After crossing the main desert, he reached the watering hole outside Midian, where sufferers were watering their folks. No sooner had Moses reached Midian than the threw himself under a tree to rest. He suffered from hunger and fatigue. The soles of his feet felt as if they were worn out of out from head walking on sand and rocks and from the dust. He did not have any money to be, buy a new pair of sandals, nor to buy foods or drinks. Moses noticed a band of shepherds shepherd watering their sheep. She went to the spring where she was. She saw two young men prevail, preventing their sheep from mixing with the others. Moses sensed that the women were in need for help. Forgetting his thirst, he drew nearer to them and asked if he could help them in any way. The older, the older sister said, We are waiting until the shepherds finish watering their sheep, then we will water up ours. 
Moses asked again, why are you waiting? The younger one said, we cannot push men. Moses was surprising that women were suffering as only men were supposed to do it. It is hard and tiresome work and one needs to be in the alert. Moses asked, why are you shepherding? The younger sister said, our father is an old man. His health is too poor for him to do to go outdoors for pasturing sheep. Moses said, I will water the sheep for you. Then Moses approached the water. He saw that the shepherds had put over the mouth of the spring in an immense rock that could only be moved by ten men. Moses embraced the rock and lifted it out of the spring's mouth. The wings of his neck and hands standing out as he did so. Moses was certainly strong. He watered their sheep and put the rock back into the place. He returned to sit in the shade of the tree. At this moment, he realized that he had forgotten to drink. His stomach was sunken because of hunger. Moses helps women shepherds. The young ladies returned home earlier than usual, which surprised her, their father. They related the incident at the spring, which was the reason that they were back early. Their father sent one of his daughters to invite the stranger to his home. Bashfully, the woman approached Moses and delivered the message. My father is grateful for what you have done for us. He invites you to our home so that he may thank you personally. Moses welcomed this invitation and accompanied the maiden to her father. Moses could see that they lived comfortably, comfortably as a happy and peaceful household. He introduced himself and told the old men about the misfortune that had befallen him and had compelled him to flee from Egypt. The old man conf comforted him, fear not, you have escaped from the wrongdoers. Moses' gentle behavior was noticed by the father and his daughters. The kind man invited him to stay with them. Moses felt at home with this happy household, for they were friendly and feared Allah. The 10 years of preparation. Time passed and he lived in seclusion far from his family and his people. This period of 10 years was a uh, importance in his life. It was a period of major preparation. Certainly Moses' mind was absorbed in the stars every night. He followed the sunrises and the sunset every day. He pondered on the plant and how it split on the the soil and appears therefore that he contemplated water and how the earth is reviewed by it and flourished after its death. Finally, Moses decides to return to Egypt. One day after the end of this period, a vague homesickness arose in Moses' heart. He wanted to return to Egypt. He was fast and firm in making his decision, telling his wife, tomorrow we shall leave for Egypt. His wife said to him, herself, there are a thousands dangers in deporting, deporting that have not yet been revealed. However, she obeyed her husband. Moses himself did not know the secret of the quick and sudden decision to return to Egypt. After all, he had fled from there 10 years ago with a piece on his hand, head. Why should he go back now? Moses begins his prophethood. 
Almighty Allah narrated his event and has there come to you the story of Moses. When he saw a fire, he said to his family, Wait, verily I have seen a fire. Perhaps I can bring you some burning brand therefrom or point some guidance at the fire. And when he came to it, the fire, he was called by name, O Moses, verily I am your Lord. So take off your shoes. You are in the sacred valley to walk. And I have chosen you. So listen to that which is inspired to you. Verily, I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana. None has the right to be worshipped but I. So worship me and offer praise perfectly. For my remembrance, verily, the hour is coming and my will is to keep it hidden that every person may be rewarded for that which he strives. Therefore, let the one who believe not therein in the day of resurrection, reckoning, paradise, and hell, etc., but follows, follows his own lusts, divert you there from lest you perish. And what is that in your right hand, O Moses? He said, this is my stick wherein I, I lean and wherewith I beat down branches for my sheep and wherein I find other uses. Allah said, cast it down, O Moses. He cast it down and before, behold, it was a snack moving quickly. Allah said, grasp it and fear not. We shall return to it, its former state and press your right hand to you, your left side. It will come forth white and shiny without any diseases as another sign that we may show you some of your greater sins. Greater signs. Go to Pharaoh. Verily, he has transgressed all burden, all bounds in disbelief and disobedience and has behaved as an arrogant and as a tyrant. Musa and Aaron talked to the Pharaoh. Allah the Almighty revealed to us part of the dialogue between Moses and Pharaoh. Allah said, Nay, go you both with our signs. Verily, we shall be with you. Listening and when you both come to Pero, say, We are the messengers of the Lord of Alameen, mankind, jinn, and all that exist. So allow the children of Israel to go with us. So far we discussed about life history of Pharaoh, life history of uh, Moses and his rival Pharaoh. If you have done, please subscribe our YouTube channel.